Yo, what's up? Welcome to Kind of Funny Games Daily for Wednesday, August 19th, 2020. I'm one of your hosts, Blessing Adioye Jr. And joining me is the force that is Gary Witta. Well, hello, Blessing. You and I were just saying before the show that it's uh, it's been a been a minute since you and I uh, yeah, hosted man. the show together. It's been a while. How you been? It's I, uh, I've, I've been good. I'm, I'm glad to be back together with you, though. I missed, uh, missed hosting with you. This is our first virtual um, KFGD, I believe, that we've done together. We've, I think we've done one or two. Like in, really? in the early days, yeah. Like a long, honestly, this this whole quarantine has felt like it's been yeah. Forever. Like this whole thing is like I don't know. I, I mean, I honestly can't tell you what day it is. And like Dude, and this you. whole day is like branded as like my day. Then I still don't know what day it is. Where does something? I don't know. Now, Gary, I've, yes. I've I've been on Twitter. I've been seeing the tweets. I've been seeing well, that the was your first, that was your first mistake, blessing. And I mean, being on being on any sort of social media is a mistake. Let me tell you, but. I've been seeing some of the good tweets. I've been seeing some of the uh, announcements about animal talking and uh, talk guys, which I believe yeah, is the new you thing happening me, with some it's of all that. Good stuff. You should basically just follow me and unfollow everyone else, and you'll only get premium content. Of course. Tell me about tell me about talk guys. What is that? Talk guys is a new show that we're launching um, very very soon. Uh, animal talking, as you know, has been a lot of fun, uh, but it's also a lot of work to put that show together every week, and it's gotten to a point where I just don't have the time. Uh, to continue doing the show on a regular weekly basis until I figure out a better way to do it. So Animal Talking is going to go on hiatus for a, for a little bit. We're going to do like some big seasonal specials. We have a Halloween spectacular uh, coming up, uh, Thanksgiving family dinner, and a Christmas special. Oh, wow. Uh, we're going to do three three big holiday specials for Animal Talking. And we may do some additional episodes as and, as and when we feel like it. But what's going to mainly plug the gap on a regular basis is, is this new show, Talk Guys. As you know, Fall Guys is the... The thing that all the all the kids, all the young yes. people are into right now, where everyone's playing it, everyone everyone's talking about Fall Guys. Fall Guys is the thing. Of course. Um, how many, how many I, crowns you got? I have five crowns. Wow. Very proud of you, Gary. Very proud. Very, of you. I'm very proud. I, and, I'm and the, still, I'm and the most one. recent one, let me tell you something. The most recent one, I beat a motherfucking speed hacker to get it. So I'm really? very nice. proud of that one. That's awesome. Um, I'm I, I'm this close to uh, quitting uh, my regular job and becoming a Fall Guys uh, esports pro. Because I feel like this, I feel like I finally Dude, found my call. Do you know? Do you know who I need to connect you with? Is Yusef McGeed. So I, I've, I've, I've seen some Fall of guys. his clips. Dude, I've been playing. So I've been playing Fall Guys since it's come out, and I'm somehow still sitting at only one win. I am terrible at Fall Guys, which I was not expecting because I, I view myself as somebody who's good at 3D platformer. So I was, I was thinking Apparently that I'd be not. Apparently, this, I thought only I'd be destroying. Who actually, folks. beat Donkey Kong 64. Or Barrett, actually, I people played, who are I, good at 3D platformers. I played the whole game. I just haven't beat the final boss because to get and, the final and, boss. And so to here's the, here's the thing, Les. Here's the thing. If you haven't beaten the final boss, does that mean you've beaten the game? I didn't think so. Anyway, I, didn't think I mean, so. he does make a good point, Blessing. Well, earlier this week, I was playing with Yusef McGeed on Fall Guys. And <laughs> let me tell you... changes the subject back. It's so good. Let me tell you, Yusef McGeed <laughs> somehow is a god at Fall Guys. I've never seen such an incredible run where, you know, there's the trophy that is get five wins in a row. That yes. is an impossible trophy. I think like 0.01% of players people are, have it. People are getting it, though. Yeah, so, I mean, a few people are getting it, right? And like, that's bound to happen. A broken clock can be right twice a day. Yes, yeah, statistically, McGeed, some people are going to get it. I watched Yusef McGee win four games in a row, and then lose the fifth game, but then like win the sixth game. Like, I, I watched Yusef wow. McGee in our party just destroy folks in Fall Guys. And so, not, if you're looking for a squad, not like, necessarily on team. not necessarily in a row, but uh, Doctor Lupo apparently got twenty wins yesterday. Jeez, twenty dubs. So. Here's, here's the thing that I love about Fall Guys. It clearly is a game that you can get better at. Like, I'm way better at it now than I was when I first started playing. Like, you learn the, the, unless, the rhythms and the, unless and the you're tricks Tim the level. Unless you're poor, poor old Tim the Tapman who just cannot get a win. Feel bad for the guy. Um, if he ever wants to squad up with me, Five Crown Gary, I'll happily drag him across the finish line and get him one. Um, it's a game that where skill obviously is a factor. But no matter how good you get at it, the random luck factor will always be there. And I think that's of what course. that's the combination that makes it so delightful uh, both to play and to watch. Uh, and so the idea with Talk Guys is, like I said, Animal Talk is going to take a little bit of a, of a break while we kind of regroup and try to figure out a way to, to, to keep making it that's more sustainable for me in terms of, you know, kind of time and bandwidth and stuff. Uh, but Talk Guys is going to be a show that's, that, that's going to plug the gap and it's going to be much easier to do. Uh, my, my, uh, me and my good friend, uh, Kate Stark, who works behind the scenes with me on Animal Talking, are going to co-host it. And we're going to have guests, uh, you know, a guest or two guests on every week. You know, it's a four, 
four player squad is the limit. And we're basically just going to try to conduct an interview while also playing the game. So some people have described it as like the hot ones of video games. You know, like try to do an interview, but while also at the same time, you know, putting yourself through this agonizing uh, ordeal. And it's a game that makes you kind of flip out and swear and rage quit a lot. So if we can try to sustain an interview, um, uh, you know, Kate and I can like actually interview a subject while we're all playing the game together. That's awesome. I think it'll be, you know, it's just going to be chaotic and fun and it's not going to require the same level of preparation or production value that uh, Animal Talking does. It's just, it's just going to be like a fun kind of thing that we can do on the side while Animal Talking is, uh, is taking, a, taking a rest. Um, and I think our first episode is going to be up as early as next week. So we're looking, and we've already got some oh, great wow. guests lined up. So and of course, people, people can it. find that on twitch.tv slash Gary Witter. It'll be on twitch.tv slash Gary Witter, and it'll also be on twitch.tv slash Kate, uh, which is Kate Stark's mm-hmm. channel, because we're both gonna, we're, we're both doing it together. And we're going to announce our first guest, I think, later today for our first show next week, and it's very exciting. Awesome, awesome. Uh, I'm looking forward to that, Gary. I'm going to be I'm gonna be in the chat for that one. I can't wait to watch. And also, I'm going to say this, right? Animal Talking is a show that it would have been my dream to be on Animal Talking. I know that's, that dream isn't over yet. I know it's not over. The show's there. not going anywhere. A lot of people think like Animal Talking's like canceled. It's not. It's just taking a break yeah. while while we while we regroup a little bit. Talk Guys is going to plug the gap. We've got holiday specials coming up, and we have big plans for uh, next year as well. So, blessing, we're going to get you on that Animal Talking couch. Oh, please do. And in the meantime, in the meantime, if you want to go to the Animal Talking set uh, while the set is dark and we're not using it. Um, I've actually opened up my dream island uh, today. So you can actually go in a dream right now, go and visit the Animal Talking set, sit in the host chair, sit on the couch. Your dreams literally can come true. Go to my Twitter, uh, at Gary Witter, my dream. I just posted the dream code there earlier today. Go visit the set, post pics, have fun. That's awesome. Well, Gary, enough about Animal Talking and Talk Guys. Let's talk about details on Halo's troubled development, a look at Xbox's new dashboard, and Oculus causing a rift, because this is Kind of Funny Games Daily, each and every weekday at 10 a.m. live, right here on twitch.tv slash Games. We run you through the nerdy news you know about. If you're watching live, you can correct us when we get stuff wrong by going to kindoffunny.com slash you're wrong. If you don't want to watch live, you can watch later on youtube.com slash kindoffunnygames, roosteeth.com, or you can listen later on podcast services around the globe by searching for Kinda Funny Games daily. To be a part of the show, head to patreon.com slash kindoffunnygames where bronze members or above get to write in, and silver members or above get the show ad-free with the exclusive daily post show. Housekeeping, DC Fandom is happening this Saturday. We're treating it like Greg Miller's personal E3. That means Greg and the Kind of Funny crew will be on twitch.tv slash Kind of Funny Games all day long, reacting to panels for Suicide Squad, Kill the Justice League, WB Montreal's game, The Snatter Cut, and every other DC movie. It all starts at 10 a.m. Pacific time, so don't miss out. Thank you to our Patreon producers, Mohammed Mohammed and Blackjack. Today we're brought to you by DoorDash, but... I'll tell you about that later for now. Let's begin with what is and forever will be the Roper Report. It's time for some news. We have six stories today. A baker's dozen. Starting with our number one. Gary Wood, I'm I'm happy to have you here. It's one of the hosts of Kind of Funny's X-Cast because our first couple of stories are Xbox focused. Uh, Starting with our number one, Halo Infinite's development has reportedly been hindered by outsourcing. This is Jordan Allman at IGN who writes... A report has surfaced suggesting Halo Infinite's development and recent delay have been affected by outsourcing with the upcoming Halo TV show, also apparently a significant distraction. An investigative report into the turbulent development cycle of Halo Infinite from Theorot alleges that a number of factors have contributed to the game's troubled development and eventual delay from Xbox Series X console launch into 2021. One major factor in Infinite's delay supposedly stems from the fact that a significant portion of the game is being outsourced to third-party contractors. This is a standard practice in the games industry, especially in AAA, but in Infinite's case, the report suggests that the level of outsourcing has been unusually high, and the coordination between the many different companies contributing to Infinite has been rough at best. Throughout's source claims that the outsourcing was at a higher ratio than a typical studio undertakes during development which has led to communication and collaboration headaches for 343 Industries. Apparently, the E3 2019 trailer for Halo Infinite was outsourced while the game was not in a playable state, which oversold expectations for for Infinite's later demos. The report suggests that the marketing and engineering teams behind Halo Infinite have been on two different planets, which has also led to issues in messaging the game. 
The Third Out report also dwells on the departure of high-profile creatives such as Tim Longo and Mary Olson as a reason for the turmoil. Both were creative directors who left 343 Industries in 2019. The recent rumor that the game was going to ship with multiplayer and campaign as separate entities is also corroborated with the report suggesting that, that this came under consideration as a means to meet the holiday 2020 deadline. As well as the issues with outsourcing, one source told Theorot that the long gestating Halo TV series has been a significant distraction for 343 management. According to the unnamed source, the show has been, quote, taking their priority instead of focusing on making sure development progress is on the right path to reaching its targeted deadline, end quote. Gary Witta, one of the hosts of Kind of Funny's X-Cast, how do you react to all this? Um, well, I mean, certainly the, um, the news about... Um uh, uh, the game possibly being split into separate multiplayer and single player components to be shipped uh, separately so they could get something out the door, you know, earlier. Uh, we already knew that because Phil Spencer literally told me that live on Animal Talking last week. Like we got mm -hmm. that straight from the horse's mouth that they considered breaking it into different components. And that, that's, that's been covered uh, quite widely as well. So that's not really news. Um, the, the, the idea that, you know, wh whether or not outsource, again, who knows? At the end of the day, a Jason Schreier or someone in that world, like a real news hound, is one day going to get to the bottom of this and post like the big 10,000 word, you know, expose. We spoke to 30 people behind the scenes, you know, blah, 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 that sort of thing. We'll, we'll get that story eventually. And, you know, and I'm sure it'll be fascinating. Um, outsourcing, of course, nothing new in video games either. You know, you only need to, to play through the credits of, uh, you know, of, of, of any game. Um, yeah, these days, the end credits. And you'll see, like, so, like, not just the names of all the devs that worked on the, on the main team, but all the different kind of third-party outsource studios uh, that, that, that are necessary to make a game um, of that size. You know, outsourcing and contract work is not particularly uncommon uh, uh, games at this, at this size and this level and this scale. Um, but, it, I mean, but it does sound like they're... Uh oh, this in terms of um, you know, did they allocate? Hold on, their... everybody. Hold on, hold on. It looks yep. like Barry disconnected. Uh, oh, yeah, Discord like crashed and then restarted. So oh, no, I can hear you guys. Yeah, we're still streaming. We're putting okay. you guys back up. There we go. It's all good. Okay. We're, all, we're okay. All right. back. Um. Are we just gonna go like? No, no, we just keep going? Yeah, just for fun. Yeah, it. I guess all we, right. just, we just keep going. Fuck it, so, we'll do it live. Where, where, yeah, fuck it. Wait, wait. I, I don't even know where I was. Uh, okay, so yeah, I mean, it it, do, it does sound like maybe at like the manage, senior management level, um, there was the, you know, they didn't do it right. I don't know. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, look, look, all we know is the game's not coming out on time, right? So something yeah. went wrong. Um, and you know, COVID, I think, is definitely a part of it. How can it not be? It's it it, it has impacted everything you cannot ask all of your devs to work from home and expect that to not have some kind of impact on your workflow and your timeline of course it's going to set you back so i think we all sympathize with the notion that that's at least part of it yeah but again even in even we talked about this again with phil when he was on my show the other week um even the even the official statement acknowledged that that was only part of the reason why the game is getting pushed. And I think they talked about not wanting to crunch their team. That's admirable also. But it does also sound like there, there was maybe some, some, um, some mismanagement. Like the, 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 you know, the, the, the Halo TV show is, is obviously, it seems like it's sucking up a lot of, of bandwidth. They uh, lost some of their uh, senior staff, as you mentioned. It sounds like there were just many, many factors yeah. that, that taken, taken all together, um, you know, ended up with with this with this catastrophic situation of of the, the Series X is is going to launch without its flagship title uh, this year, this, and this, we talked this, about that on the X cast. This is very much like a I wish I could be a fly on the wall in the studio situation where, <clears throat> like, I remember when the Hideo Kojima stuff was going down with Konami right during the release of Metal Gear Solid Five, and so many of us were just like. What is happening? Like, what if I could just be in the room, right? If I could just be like an, an invisible source in the room and just take everything in and understand how these different puzzle pieces are causing for these rifts to happen, that would be such a, like such a treat. Like, it's, Halo, it prob it's probably not that interesting or or glamorous, though. Blessing. It's probably just a banal, like you know, we don't I mean, have the resources. We're overstretched. This is not. We're not going to hit this on time. Like, it's well, probably definitely like not as boring. Def definitely not as glamorous as the as the Hideo Kojima stuff. But in the case of Halo, it just seems like 
everything in the world is working against this game, right? Like we mentioned COVID as a big factor. And of course that is going to have a, have an impact on the game with everybody working from home. But then you also look at like, yeah, the demo they showed at the Xbox presentation for next gen, right? Or not next gen, but the Xbox presentation, uh, you know, that didn't necessarily blow everybody away. You look at what they're messaging in this new story now, right? Like the, the idea of, hey, what if we chop this thing up into pieces and release it that way? Oh man, we're losing our high profile creatives, right? Tim Longo and Mary Olsen are gone. Oh man, there's a TV show that uh, the studio is also focused on for some reason. Like, it seems like this this is one of those cases of, man, I wonder, I wonder at a certain point, what like what was the straw that broke the camel's back for 343 where they were just like fuck it we can't do this at launch like we got to move it because i imagine at some point that had to happen with a game so important like halo infinite uh halo infinite was to the xbox's launch like at a certain point it takes an act of god for that game to get delayed the way it got delayed and it seems like that is what happened uh with all these different elements yeah there. because again like it was a it's a huge huge loss for microsoft like there's there's no way to spin this as as is in any way good um it's terrible and microsoft are gutted about it there's no there's no there's no question so they they obviously would have done every it's a multi-billion dollar company they would have done everything in their power to get this game out came out for the holidays they couldn't do it uh mm -hmm. covid uh losing uh creatives being overstretched Outsourcing, like there's, like, yeah, there's, there's no one thing, right? It's a whole combination of things. Yeah. We did talk about it's like this a 10 lot. Different things here. Whether, whether or not the, the, the very lukewarm reaction to the, to the footage they showed, uh, played, played a part. Who knows? We, we took a deeper dive, uh, with that on the X cast last week with uh, Mike and Alana, and like, again, well, uh, some, some day down the road, maybe we'll know the truth. But it sounds like just a confluence of a ton of factors all at once, kind of a perfect storm. Some things avoidable, some things unavoidable, like COVID. Some things perhaps avoidable. Who knows? Yeah. Um, in time, maybe we'll know. All we know is right now, it's a huge bummer the game's not coming out. Do you, do you think there's a chance that this game comes out and it is not good? Like, do you think this game can come out and disappoint at this point? Because uh, up until now, I've been, I've been of the mind that this, big, this game is too big to fail. This game is too important to come out and fail, especially for what it means to Xbox, for what it means to Halo as a franchise, to what it means to the Series X's launch, right? With all those things considered, and with like the the debut trailer we got and how it looked like they were trying to return to form and do all the things right. With all those things considered, leading up to this launch, I've been like, there's no way this game can, can come out and like not live up to expectations. Now, like looking around and seeing all these different factors, I'm like, oh man. Is there a chance this game comes out and it doesn't do well? And if that's the case, what does that mean for Halo? I guess anything's possible. I mean, Halo is a series that has 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 had its ups and downs over the years, right? Halo Two. I remember a lot of people uh, had their problems with it. Halo Five. Uh, a lot of people had issues with it. So it's a series that's had its ups and downs over the years. Um, I think mostly very good. You know, it, it, it's earned its place as a as a tier one uh, franchise. But it's 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 definitely had its speed bumps. Um, this definitely is one that Microsoft cannot really afford to have a speed bump. Like again, this is this is um, you know the new generation. You know, it just it just seems like this is gonna this needs to be the biggest. It needs to be the biggest and best Halo game ever, and it needs to be a system seller for Series X. Mm. Um, they can't. They really. I don't think they can afford for it uh, not to be. So they will. They will do everything in their power to make this the best possible uh, you know, uh, Halo game ever. Having said that, they did everything in their power to get it out for the holidays. It, yeah. They couldn't do it. Um, now, however, at least, they do have time. They can say, well, look, we don't have to hit this holiday deadline. Now it doesn't, does it matter if it comes out in March, April, or August, or September? You know, they're still going to want to get it out as soon as possible, but they can, they can now at least sit back and take their time and focus on getting the game as, as good as it can be by the time it launches. Is it is it possible that it comes out and it's not that great? I guess anything's possible, but I think it's unlikely because I really think now that they do have the additional time and knowing how important it is, um, yeah, I, if I was a betting man, I would say, yeah, it's going to be good. To keep on the Xbox train, story number two, uh, and this is a visual one, and so, Barrett, I'm going to need your help with this one. Microsoft has revealed the Xbox Series X dashboard. I'm pulling from Tom Ivan at VGC. Barrett, the, the, the link that I've shared with you is, is a YouTube video from the Xbox account which, uh, where they show off some of, the, some of how the dashboard looks. Tom Ivan, though, writes, The company said in an accompanying blog post that the new Xbox experience will be available not just for the next-gen console, but also for Xbox One, Xbox Game Pass on PC, and all Xbox mobile apps. Quote, 
The new Xbox look and feel is designed to be fa faster to use, more approachable, and visually appealing, according to the platform holder. The home screen will load more than 50% faster when you boot your Xbox and is almost 30% faster to load when you're returning from a game. Furthermore, these improvements use 40% less memory than what was previously required. Text is more readable, elements on screen are easier to understand at a glance, and, and accomplishing your task is faster than ever, end quote. Uh, they added, this includes towel-shaped fonts and a, an updated illustration style and more. The overall layout of most of the console pages remains familiar, just faster, and more focused, end quote. Microsoft also said that a new Xbox mobile app, which is currently in development, will be better integrated into Xbox social experiences. Updates and clips players want to share from their console will automatically be sent to the mobile app, which can also be used to send messages and launch parties. And Microsoft said it has con consolidated notifications to reflect activity across all platforms. Gary, again, one of the hosts of Kind of Funny at XCast, how does the how does the idea of a new Xbox dashboard strike you? And do you like all the things you're hearing about it? And I know it sounds quite quite silly, but I'm actually quite excited to to see and use the new um, dashboard. Uh, I am, you know, as you know, I'm platform agnostic. I have all the systems. Mm -hmm. I like I love them all. Uh, I play games across all of them. I'm not like a platform warrior. I don't have any time for that kind of tribalism. Having said that, my preference is. Uh, generally towards the Xbox. I like the controller better. I just like the ecosystem better. I've been, you know, I, I've, I've, had, I've had every Xbox since the original one. I just I just like it over there. Maybe I just like the color green. I don't know. Mm. Um, but uh, I do think that the current iteration of the Xbox dashboard is a bit of a mess. I think it has a lot of personality. I, I, I like that it, it, feels, it feels warm and inviting and there's always something to look at or click on or do. But it's not it's not terribly well designed. It's easy. I, I I still get confused and lost. Like, wait, where am I? Where are my games? Where's X Pass? How do I redeem a code? Like, it's easy to get lost on that. It's it, it need it needs a lot of streamlining. Yeah. I think that the PlayStation crossbar is a bit cold, and a bit it doesn't have a lot of personality. But it is at least simple and easy to navigate. Uh, the Xbox dashboard just kind of feels like they just threw a bunch of shit at the screen uh, without like much of a. I'm sure they did put a lot of thought into it, but I think they largely failed. Uh, in terms of making it accessible and easy to run. It just looks like a bunch of squares. Um, and I don't know how much they're going to change it. It definitely can and should be snappier uh, with the next generation. It's uh, The Xbox UI is not always the most responsive. You know, I'm confident with the Series X that'll be improved. But they they just need, I, I just think they need a better design approach. Their, their yeah. UX has is, 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 is never been brilliant. Um, like the old 360 blades were better than this. Um, I think they got a bit carried away with uh, trying to standardize, standardize kind of the Microsoft design language. You know, the tiles like Windows 10, Windows Phone, Xbox, all having that same very, oh, it's just a bunch of squares. It's it, it, That to me kind of feels like a bit of a holdover from a bunch of stuff that Microsoft have since abandoned. Windows Phone's not a thing anymore. Uh, maybe it's time to just let, you know, the Xbox UI uh, be it, be its own thing and have its own uh, specific. I don't know how much, how radical it's going to look compared to the, to the, the current one. Uh, mm -hmm. But it 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 it, it definitely needs uh, some work because it's it is a bit clunky and not terribly easy or instinctive to navigate. Yeah, I'm with that too. I like the the idea that with them giving up the idea of hard generation cuts, like with them leaning back away from that idea, that's not stopping them from making these big improvements in their UI. Uh, and I'm I'm with you that I think. I think there are plenty of improvements they can make. I think on both the both the Xbox and PlayStation side, like I'm not huge into either of their their uh, main menu UIs. Like on the Xbox side, I just feel like I, I feel like they can make it make more sense. Like I, I don't like having to go to my games and apps if I want to scroll through my games. And even Barrett was showing some of the images that they had. Um, I, I like the idea that it seems that they're putting games more front and center. The idea that it's going to be what fifty percent more faster uh, in certain places, and in over overall, it seems like they are going for a faster, snappier feel. I really appreciate on the PlayStation side of things. You know, my main issue is that it's not as snappy as I want it to be. Like a lot of times, things things chug uh, when I'm just like switching through different menu items. On both of those sides, I think there's improvements to be made. Weirdly enough, the UI I appreciate the most when it comes to console UI is the Nintendo Switch. And I know a big part yeah. of that is because like they're not doing as much, right? Like you don't have parties, you don't have uh, you know, the the amount the amount of the same you don't amount have a of bunch options. Of multimedia apps and other stuff. Yeah. To, hey, here's your games. And exactly. That's what, they, that's what they've always done well. Yeah. Yeah. But that's I mean, but like it 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 works so well for them in terms of making that UI feel one clean, 
too understandable, three quick. And if Microsoft is making their way towards that with the new Xbox dashboard, I'm all about that. I think that's going to be awesome. There's, there's really um, no excuse. PlayStation doesn't. Yeah. And again, I'm more of an Xbox guy, but PlayStation doesn't do this. It never freezes up. It never slows down. Uh, when I use the Xbox One that's not UI, true. Offer, does it really? Oh, or maybe dude, I, just, it, maybe it, I just like, don't it, use it. It slows down a menus. It slows down a lot. Gary. Well, let me it's, tell you what. Let me Because I use the Xbox One one more. Let me tell you what bothers me on that one. I'm sure you've experienced this as well. It's like you'll be trying to move around, but it seems like it's frozen up. And then like every, then all your commands will come through at once. You know, and you'll like navigate through mm -hmm. 10 tiles because you kept pushing the down button or whatever. It, it there's, ne there's never, especially going forward with the next generation, it's never an excuse for your, for your like your overlay UI to be sluggish or you should never chug. It should always be super, super fast and responsive and snappy. And, and again, with this next generation of technology, this, it, 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 it bloody better be. Um, yeah. I hope so. Yeah. I also think it's one, it's those, it's, it's one of those situations where the console you use more, the more you're going to notice how slow and sluggish and how nonsensical it, it is. And so for me, like as a PlayStation user, after what, seven years of being on PS4, I've gotten to the point where I'm like, oh man, I know, I know every single one of the issues in that UI, right? Like whenever, whenever you go into your library and try to click a new game and like, you see the PlayStation symbols and it's loading and it's like, why is this taking so long to load just whenever, to open up a new game? Whenever you get into privacy settings and then like the entire UI just like slows down. Um, whenever you want to hide a game, and I know this, is, this yeah, isn't a thing that oh both of you are going to do, but for, for us, when we review games, there's an option in the privacy settings to go and uh, hide certain games from your library. And the, there is no rhyme or reason to how there that thing isn't. is put together. It, there's no it, it's not al it's No, not that's a mess. It's, it's so yeah. bad. And it, when you scroll through it, like you'll go through a page and then when you technically get to like more loading, it takes like way too long to load in. It gets all clunky and weird and slow down. Yeah. The PS4 UI is just after I mean, seven look, years this, is tiring. <laughs> this this yeah. next generation is going to have power to spare. And a lot of the conversation that we've seen from both Xbox and PlayStation side is quality of life improvements, right? Faster load times, um, having got multiple games in suspense states so you can just like jump back and forth between them. Um, just USB C. I know I've hopped on about it, but just that, just charging a controllers with a with a with a with a connector that doesn't make you want to fucking hang yourself with oh, it. Oh yeah. Um, you know that that kind of stuff is uh, all of that's welcome, and a, and a faster, snappier, more responsive, easier to navigate, better designed UI should be part should be on that list. Story number three. Oculus VR will start requiring Facebook uh, Facebook accounts, and users aren't happy. This is from Ooh. Matt Kim at IGN. And before I even get into it, Gary, have you been keeping up with this at all? Have you have you seen this? I saw it yesterday. Yeah, yeah. This is an upsetting one. Uh, Oculus announced that starting in October 2020, first time users on an Oculus VR headset will need to log in using a Facebook account. In that in that support for independent Oculus accounts will end after January 1st, 2023. This announcement has been shown. This announcement has shown to be an unpopular move for users who wish to keep their Oculus accounts separate from Facebook, or or for those who don't have Facebook accounts to begin with and don't wish to have one. In a new blog post, Oculus announced the change. The change coming to the Oculus account. All right, let me let me read that again. In a new blog post, Oculus announced the change coming to the Oculus Oculus account. First-time users for Oculus headsets like the Quest will need a Facebook account to log into the ecosystem, and existing users will need to merge their Oculus and Facebook accounts. Oculus users who don't merge accounts can use their Oculus accounts for two years, but support will end in 2023. After this, they'll still be able to use the device, quote, but full functionality will require a Facebook account, end quote. Facebook says this is a way to streamline the account systems for Oculus, which was bought by the social media company in 2014 uh, for approximately $2 billion. Facebook also says that merging the accounts will allow for, quote, more Facebook-powered multiplayer and social experiences coming, coming soon in VR, like Horizon, where you can explore, play, and create worlds, end quote. Gary, are you excited to merge your Facebook account with your Oculus account so you can play VR? No, of course not. You know how I feel mm -hmm. like Facebook, they can all go fuck themselves over there. And this is a, a, a very depressing move. It's a shame because I love VR and I'm very excited about the future of VR. And Oculus obviously is a major, major player in that space, you know, arguably the biggest player of all. Um, and, you know, it's disappointing. It's sad because I like Oculus, but I hate Facebook. And those mm. two have been, you know, obviously all part of one company since uh, 2014, as you, uh, as you uh, rightly say. 
Um, and this is just another move to kind of force people into their bullshit um, uh, ecosystem. And uh, I don't know what I'm going to do. I have a Valve Index here. Maybe I'm just going to lean into that. I have a Quest here. I like the hardware. It's really fun. My kid likes playing VR. Um, but uh, people you know, in the I chat are saying too that the head of um, of Oculus said that they would never integrate with Facebook like this. Uh, was well, that uh, was that Palmer Lucky that said that? Yes. I mean, these people say a lot of things, don't yeah, they? True. Yeah. Um, um, and it, it it just sucks to <laughs> be like, all right, well, you know, my Oculus Quest is going only going to be fully functional for two years, and then it'll just be partially functional because there's no way I'm fucking linking those two. The only reason I still have a Facebook account is uh, for the kind of funny Facebook uh, account, and that's like the only mm -hmm. reason I yeah, keep my I, Facebook um, account a thing. I, I, I had a Facebook fan page for a long time where I would like promote my shit. I shut that down. It's no longer active. I did that ages ago. I still have a personal page, but I restricted it to like, you, you, I, I don't post on it anymore. Um, the only reason I haven't deactivated it is because Facebook has its claws into so many things. Some of my logins yeah. to other services are through Facebook. And uh, every now and again, you just have fucking have to use it because it's such a fucking vampire squid with its tentacles like into everything. Um, there, there are certain things that I still need it for, but I basically keep it like it's it, it's it's on Facebook's on life support with me. Basically, I, I only use it for the bare minimum of functionality that that I need to. And as soon as I can detach some of those accounts and create other logins for them, I'm going to deactivate my Facebook account um, immediately. Fuck Facebook. Fuck Mark Zuckerberg. It is a shitty, awful company that makes the world actively a far worse place every fucking day. And you should delete your account. I I'm so I love Oculus, but yeah, I'm with you that I hate this. Like I, I hate this integration. I'm I'm with you guys that I don't use my Facebook at all. Like I've stopped accepting new friend requests on Facebook. Like I've gotten to that point where I'm like I I would delete the app or delete I would delete the service if like my family didn't use the service. Basically, like that's mainly that's the main thing that's keeping me uh uh keep my Facebook account. But yeah, this is a bummer. It's a bummer one because yeah, they 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 said they weren't going to do this, right? Because that's where I think that's where the assumption went, right? When Facebook bought Oculus, oh no, they're gonna they're they're gonna integrate everything and make Oculus essentially like a Facebook machine. And fast forward to 2020, 2023, when they uh, finally shut down the Oculus accounts, right? Like that's gonna be the case. And it's unfortunate. I'm still gonna use my Oculus headset probably by then. You know, if it, if there are still still games coming out, um, but. Yeah, again, it's a bummer. And I and I feel like this kind of explains to you why I felt like the Oculus accounts in the first place weren't too functional. Like there wasn't there wasn't much going on there in terms of um the different features and 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 how like how well they function. Like the the Oculus accounts seemed very basic in functionality. Uh which was fine cuz it got the job done, but I feel like this kind of this kind of points back to this, right? Of hey, why do anything with it if it's not going to be around soon? And so Bummer all around. Yeah, and I think that I think it's a miscalculation. I think they assume that a lot of people go, "Oh, well, if I if I want Oculus, better get on Facebook, better link my account." Whereas, I I, I think they're underestimating the number of people are saying, "Well, fuck Oculus, then I'm just not going to use it." Like they're they're going to lose customers mm -hmm. over this. So they may not care. Facebook ultimately doesn't care. It's such a big company um, that you know a handful of people like me going fuck Facebook. You know, it doesn't it, it doesn't make a dent. But you know, you, you, you got you got to you got to stand up for something, and I'm going to stand up against a platform that actively allows hate speech to flourish and um, you know radicalize people on a daily basis. It's 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 garbage. It's shit garbage that is fucking up the world, and I want no part of it. Fuck off, Facebook. Delete your account. Story number four: FIFA 21 won't feature crossplay, uh, even across console generations. This is from Jordan Alleman at IGN. EA Sports has confirmed that FIFA 21 will not feature online crossplay even across console generations in the same platform family. The FIFA Direct Communication Twitter account announced the news in response to a question from the FIFA Ultimate Team Weekly podcast about whether those those who own the game on PS4 could play FIFA 21 online with friends on PS5. FIFA tweeted this morning, quote, we won't be able to play a cross-generation or cross-play in FIFA 21. However, you will be able to carry over your FIFA Ultimate Team progression from PS4 to PS5 and from Xbox One to Xbox Series X, end quote. With that, I'm going to pull in a question from Derek, who wrote into patreon.com slash kindoffunnygames, just like you can, and says, I know you guys don't talk a lot about sports games on KFGD, but FIFA 21 announced today that that while you'll get a free upgrade from PS4 to PS5 and from Xbox One to Xbox Series X, 
that no cross-platform or cross-generational play will be supported. I don't typically play a lot of online games, but FIFA is the one I've played consistently with my friends for the last few months, and we were looking forward to playing FIFA 21 together. However, I'm planning to upgrade to PS5, and he was going to wait a while before looking at next-gen hardware. I don't know if I have a question per se, but is this something we see as being commonplace moving forward? This is taking a player base that's already split into two and splitting it into four. Gary, one, how do you how do you react to the idea that there's not going to be cross generational play and cross cross uh, platform play uh, for FIFA 21? And two, what what do you what do you think we're at in terms of the overall conversation in cross play and cross generational play and games in general, not even just FIFA? I mean, we're going to be in this space for a while as one generation transitions into to another. Probably not for the next six months or so. This is going to be. Uh, in the conversation every time a big game comes out. Um, no cross-platform no cross platform play, no cross-play, as you know, uh, is hugely disappointing to me any time I hear about it. I don't know why it's so hard. Someone needs to explain it to me. If, if Warzone uh, and Fortnite and other games can do it, I don't know why the other big boys uh, can't do it. Um, it's it, it, it drives me crazy. There's got to be some reason. Maybe it's really expensive. Maybe they just don't want the hassle. I don't know. But like, it would be a very... It's just something that, that everybody would benefit from. So why not do it? No, no one's given me a satisfactory answer to mm. that. On the cross-generation thing, yeah, anti-consumer again, no surprise coming from EA. They want to get as much money from you as possible. I do think it will hurt them on sales of the current generation. If I were in the market for FIFA, and I honestly don't know if I am, um, why, 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 would I, why would I get the Xbox One or the PS4 version now um, if I know there's going to be a superior version just down the road that they want me to buy again? I'll just wait. I'll just wait. Yeah. Um, and then I may not get it at all. Of course, the one part of the functionality that they are going to support is Ultimate Team because that's where FIFA makes all its money. That's the cash cow, the microtransactions. And, and, and when I say I don't even know if I'm going to go into FIFA again this year, I have, I think, I have FIFA 20. I got the last one. I don't, I don't know if I'm going to do it again, though, because, again, it's, uh, I, it, I don't feel like I'm like tr trying to kind of like stand on a wall about everything here, but we've just had a couple of topics that like really irritate me, the, the Facebook thing being one of them. And now FIFA, which, you know, is rightly pilloried as being one of, one of the most pernicious uh, players in the microtransaction space. What they do with the ultimate team stuff is gross. And I don't support it at all. Um, and it's it's driven entirely by greed. They just want mm -hmm. as much money out of you as possible. So of course, Ultimate Team, they're going to back. They're, they're never they're never going to inhibit your ability to play Ultimate Team. Oh God, I can't have that. Um, so I don't even know if I'm going to support FIFA or be a part of it going forward. I played a couple of games in the most recent mode with my daughter. Uh, it was all right, um, but uh, uh, the, the the lack of cross play is disappointing. I don't quite understand the the reason. The 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 lack of cross. Uh, uh, cross-platform support, like, oh, yeah, we'll upgrade you from one version to the next. Because, hey, we're on the verge of a next generation. We want to make sure you can you can buy it now and still enjoy it going forward. That's disappointing, but not terribly surprising coming from EA or any of these big companies that, you know, if they mm -hmm. can, anytime they can double dip, they're going to do it. Well, that's that's where this becomes very confusing to me because they mentioned that, yeah, like, you'll be able to upgrade from FIFA 21 on, on current gen to next gen. But like, if if that's the case, why not have cross gen play between platforms? Like, you would think that if if you're going so far as to allow people to make that upgrade and you know dive into the PS4 version and, and have free access to the next, it would it would be beneficial to have that cross gen play to, to keep people in your ecosystem. Because the the idea of not having it, you would think would lend would lend to the idea of hey, we want people to buy the game twice. Like that's kind of how it's been, right? Over the last few generations, if you get if you get FIFA on current gen, cool. Like as as EA, I'm like sweet, get it again because we're gonna sell two copies to you that way. Like that that would be the the business business strategy. But with the free upgrade, it's like, well, in that case, what do you? Why not do it? Like I don't and, get it. You know, like if you buy, yeah. like I, I remember when uh, when Apple TV brought um started uh, doing uh, uh 4K when it added 4K stuff to its library. Any movie that I had bought prior to that, which was now available in 4K, got instantly upgraded to the 4K version for free. They didn't make me rebuy it. Why can't it just be like that? Yeah. And like, I don't know, this, this, whole, this whole story is interesting. To Derek's question here of, is this something we see as being commonplace moving forward? I think we're at the place now where more and more it is becoming frowned upon uh, to not have cross-platform play or not have cross-gen play 
cross gen that's the thing that's going to last for probably like a year or two as far as people talking about it like once we get further into next gen that's not really going to be a talking point until ps6 and whatever the next xbox is i but want that ps9 thing i want that crystal ball thing no, that dude, the, the, the thing that'll just float in your living room i'm, yeah, all, I'm want, all about I want, it i want that i want that crystal sphere that like beams images directly into my brain oh yeah PS9, 100%. i gotta stay alive for ps9 but like i i think as far as cross-play between Xbox and PlayStation and, and PC and Switch, that's going to be a th- that's going to th- be a thing where the walls continue to break down. Like we're already at a place where, like, the reason why this article is being written is because we're at a place where it's not weird to point it out. Like, it's not weird to be like, "Hey, why isn't there cross-play? Like, why aren't you doing this as a company?" Last gen, this would not have been an article. Like, this would have been. Like assumed because yeah. no, not really any game was doing crossplay. Yeah, the the, um, the 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 tide is moving in that direction, and yeah, it's going to become increasingly unfashionable to not offer crossplay. It's still it's still the exception rather than the norm. Most games still don't do it. Some of the big ones do, but many of them don't. And you know, it's to, to me, it's happening too slowly in a drip drip drip. Like every mm-hmm. time I see a story like this, of oh, FIFA won't support it. I'm like, really? We gotta wait another year for them to get on board here. It's like we're at the every, place, every, every big every big player that does get on board makes it harder for the other guys to to say, well, we're not gonna do it. You know, we we need yeah. to reach that we need to reach kind of a tipping point where it's like, okay, now it's the norm. Why are you the exception? We're not there yet. We're we're at the place though now though that Call of Duty and Fortnite both have crossplay. Like I feel like Call of Duty should be the tipping point. Like I feel like we're at the tipping point now. Um and like we're not we're not at the place now where most games are 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 doing it necessarily, but I like I don't think there's any going back now that Call of Duty is doing it. I think we're gonna get to that place probably by I mean, probably yeah. within the next couple of years. And and Call of Duty obviously Call of Duty and Fortnite are two of the biggest games out there, right? And they do it. Um and even something here's another one blessing. So just just mm-hmm. something as simple as cross progression. Now I give the four guys oh, yeah. developers a break on this because they're a small team. And they just, they're, they're a little team that happened to have like, uh, you know, a massive, massive hit. So right now they're playing catch up to kind of deal with, you know, how successful their game has been. I have that on PlayStation and PC and I'm playing it on different formats depending on who, where my friends are. But there's no crime having to level up two different characters because there's no pro- cross progression. Mm. I can understand how cross play can be different, but like, why can't like the little bit of data that tells you what, you know, what skin my character is wearing and what level he is and what gear he has, why can't that just be in the cloud and whatever version I'm playing, it just go, it just goes grabs that cross progression at least shouldn't be a big deal, but apparently it is. Cross progression, I think, is the probably the harder thing to implement because you imagine with that. Depending on the game, you need to have your own account. And so, like for Call of Duty, and I, I do not know if Call of Duty has cross progression because I've not tried to play it on any other platform. You figure that'd be an easier thing to make work because you have an Activision account. But for something right. like Fall Guys, which doesn't have its own uh, system, yeah, in I that guess way. You would, like, you don't I have a Fall Guys have, account. You would have to plug. Maybe you could, but, but again, maybe you could. You know, they could and, create their own account, or you could plug in via, you know, I don't know, whatever. And like, you I feel could, like for you for. For Fall Guys, that's probably a thing that wasn't in the books because, like, it's an indie indie developed game published by Devolver. All this stuff, like, on their ramp up towards launch, they probably just didn't see it as a necessary thing for the budget that they're working at. Now that the game is huge, and now that they're like, now that they're rolling in that in that moolah, like, I think it's a matter of time before you see them implement some of those changes, right? Like, I I I think they have they have it in their bandwidth now if they wanted to like put focus on it to. Create some kind of Fall Guys account system to which now you do you can have cross progression. Yeah, you're. I mean, I understand. I understand the issue is you you need to have like a, a like a totally different third party account, or maybe that you know I don't know. Is there a way to link your PSN and your Steam accounts so that you know they talk to each other? Again, I don't know the mm-hmm. the, the, the the technical side of it. The the good news blessing is it's coming right. The arc of history sure. is long, but it bends towards progress and all of that kind of stuff. We're going to get there cross progression and cross play. When we're old men talking to our grandchildren, grandchildren, one day blessing, they're going to be like, tell me a granddad, granddad about the days, you know, when, you know, Xbox and when PlayStation couldn't play people couldn't play together. Oh yeah. Those were, those were dark times. Yeah. And, and it's going to, it's going to seem silly to like the, you know, the next generation of gamers who are like, really? Like you were all, you, you could only play over here, but then they could play over there. Like, this weird, you know, era of uh, of gamers being, you know, uh, bifurcated into these different boxes. Um, yeah, it's silly, and we're living through silly times right now. But it, 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 we'll get there. It's just going to take a while. 
story number five, uh, Sega is focusing more on ports after this, after the success of Persona 4 on Steam. And I'm not going to read through the whole article because we're getting late in the show. But to sum it up, basically an investor Q&A that released today, uh, Sega said that repeat sales of its catalogs significantly increased in March uh, in April this year, of course, due to the pandemic and all the different stuff going on. Um, and even in June and July, where like things started to dip, they still sold more than last year. Uh, and so with that, they said that that um, with that and the, and the success of Persona 4 Golden on Steam, uh, they're going to start working on more ports. Uh, and so that's very exciting for me, who's somebody who I'm somebody who wants to see Persona 4 Golden and Persona 3 and Persona 5, honestly, on Switch. And I know that, like that is kind of a jump and a stretch given Ain't gonna what they said, what given what they said in the investor meeting. But I'm gonna make that stretch. I could, Give I could me see all the Persona plus, games on Switch. I, I, I could see them bringing Persona Four Golden to like PS4 and PS5, but that's like all I can see them doing. But like the Switch, though, you know, like those are such good mobile games, or not mobile handheld games. Yeah, they're perfect for they're handheld. Great for on the go and, and laying honestly, down in your bed and stuff. It's great. And, and like honestly, I've already played Persona Four Golden, so like if you don't, then don't. Give me Persona Three though. Because Persona 3, I feel like, is, is, is the one where that game is stuck on PS2. And I know there's P3 portable, but like, that's kind of different from Persona 3 is I understand it. Kind of funny.com slash you're wrong if you have more info on that, if you want to enlighten me. But come on, son. Give me that game. Right, Barrett? I'm sorry. I've just been too broken by, like, the years, I feel like, of asking for Persona 5 on Switch. And we're just never going to get it. We're never going to get it. It's fine. That, where's, uh, where's that Persona 5 scramble, Barrett? I have wasn't no idea. A, I'm assuming it's just wasn't never that gonna... supposed to be a 2020 game, <clears throat> according to Barrett Courtney? No, that was according to no, that was according to you that you said it was gonna come. I think in the summer, and I was like, I don't know. They're no. usually yeah, I, you did. I said yeah, I did. didn't think the game was no. So, my, my argument find the somebody fucking... go back to PS. I love you. No, it's what games my, what daily. My argument or no, I said I thought this was on PS. I love you. This or was maybe games it was daily. I don't run PS. I love you, so I, I think it was for sure games daily. You um, ran a few times on on in, when we were in the studio. There was definitely a point because I thought you were crazy for thinking that Persona Five Scramble was going to come earlier than I did, and I thought the earliest that no. Persona Five Scramble would no. come was would be the fall, and that was like a big if. So I'm just kind of funny. Com slash you're wrong if y'all are able to find it by then. But I could have sworn my argument was that Persona Five Scramble wasn't coming until 2021. Because my mm. argument, I remember making the argument that they're not going to release Royal and Scramble in the same year in the West. I mean, they did that in Japan, though. <clears throat> that's yeah, not... but I said in the West, though. Yeah, that's not how they do things. They want they launch things in Japan first, and then they launch it in the West six months later. That's just how we they shall always. See. Okay, we right. shall see. Kind of funny. dot com slash you're wrong. Let me know who's right here between me and Barrett. Story number six: Prince of Persia could be getting a remake. Uh, I'm pulling this from WCCF Tech, and this is honestly breaking as we we're starting the show. And so I got I got pieces that I'm putting together here. And so you're, you're, y'all are going to go on a walk with me. Uh, this is Nathan Birch. For some time now, there have been whispers that some sort of Prince of Persia revival is in the works, and Ubisoft themselves have fed into the hype, bringing the Prince of the Prince the Prince to For Honor uh, for a limited time event. Granted, some of the clues that Prince of Persia is returning, like a do domain name that ended up being fake, had been dead ends. Still, the rumors persist. While another scrap of evidence that Prince of Persia is coming back has popped up, Guatemalan retailer Max re recently listed a, a mysterious Prince of Persia game on their website. Specifically, the, the listing's original URL referenced or referred to the game as, quote, Prince of Persia Remake. Now a listing from Guatemala may sound a little iffy, but the Max website looks above above board, and apparently the company is, is the official distributor for Nintendo and a lot of other companies in the country. Definitely take this with a great grain of salt for now, but these kind of foreign retailers retailer leaks end up being the real deal more of, more often than you'd think. Um, I'm also going to pull the fact that at Jason Schreier on Twitter. Uh, tweeted about this, but didn't really didn't really give any sort of confirmation. Uh, all he said was, "Video game retailers sure love leaking Ubisoft surprise announcements." Uh, and Jason Schreier, of course, is the number one uh, uh, games reporter in the business, aside from Andy Cortez. Uh, they share they share the honor of number one. Um, but exciting stuff it was real. Once again, take it with a huge grain of salt. The Prince of Persia could be coming back in the, in a remake form. Gary, does that interest you at all? Yeah, absolutely. We talked about this a little bit before we uh, went on air. I'll be down with the Prince of Persia remake. I go all the way back to the original. I played the, the very first one uh, on the Commodore Amiga. That's how I first played Prince of Persia, and I've loved it ever since. Loved Sands of Time. 
um, loved, you know, uh, all the stuff they've, they've done with it uh, since then. And it is, it's ripe for a remake, you know. Um, it's, 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 it's laid fallow for a while. I think Prince of Persia is a, is a series that, you know, has been kind of on the back burner uh, for a while long enough that we could be genuinely excited about it, it coming back. Um, and whether or not we talked, whether or not we talked about, well, it, would this be a remake of like the OG 2D Prince of Persia, and if so, what would that look like? Mm -hmm. Or would or might or might this be um, a remake of Sands of Time, which for many people um, that they consider that kind of the original Prince of Persia because that was the first big reboot. Um, so who knows? I, I I love the fact that we're getting leaks from Guatemalan retailers. Like news comes from everywhere. You never oh, know yeah. where it's coming I mean, from next. Um, uh, who knows? It does. It does. It doesn't sound uh, uh, super corroborated just yet. But uh, to answer your question, yeah, I would love Prince of Persia to come back. I'd be curious to see what they did with it. Shall see. Usually, this is part of the show where I'd give some sort of segue and talk about how, oh man, Prince of Persia is so far away. If I want to know what's coming out to Mom Grab Shops, I'd then ask you where I go. But before I get there, I want to tell you about our sponsor. Of course, you can go to patreoncom slash games where you can get the show ad free. And speaking of ads, this episode of Kind of Funny Games Daily is brought to you by DoorDash. Between never-ending laundry cycles and incoming emails, you've got plenty on your to-do list. Give yourself one less thing to worry about and let DoorDash take care of your next meal. DoorDash is the app that brings you food you're craving right now, right to your door. Ordering is easy. Open the DoorDash app, choose what you want to eat, and your food will be left safely outside your door with the new contactless delivery drop-off setting. With over 300,000 partners in the U.S., Puerto Rico, Canada, and Australia, you can support your local go-tos or choose from your favorite national restaurants like Chipotle, Wendy's, and the Cheesecake Factory. Tim, Andy, and Greg, all uh, and, and all the Kind of Funny crew have been going nuts over the Popeye's spicy chicken sandwich. I've personally been going nuts over the Jollibee's chicken sandwich, the classic one. Go get it. It's amazing. Uh, you can get it delivered. You can get both those things delivered, both the chicken sandwiches from both those places, delivered right now with DoorDash. Right now, our listeners can get $5 off and zero delivery fees on their first order of $15 or more when you download the DoorDash app and enter code GAMES. That's $5 off and zero delivery fees on your first order when you download the DoorDash app in the App Store and enter code GAMES. Don't forget, that's code GAMES for $5 off your first order with DoorDash. Uh, Gary? I'm so excited to finally go back uh, to Jollibee and get another spicy chicken sandwich. I'm a big Jollibee uh, fan lunch. as well, by the way. I love, really? I love Jollibee. Oh, what's yeah. your favorite? What's your favorite menu item? Um, I like their chicken. I like their burgers. Mm -hmm. Actually, they have good I like burgers. You, I like that you can even get spaghetti there. Like they do everything. Yes. It's great. They do. They do everything. Whatever you're in the mood for, Jollibee. Jollibee's got you covered. I'm excited to go back to Jollibee, but lunchtime is just so far away, Gary. If I want to know what's coming out to, right now. Today, to Mom and Grop Shops, where would I look? The official list of upcoming software on each and every platform as listed by the Kind of Funny Games Daily Show hosts each and every weekday. Yeah. Out today. Uh, she Sees Red interactive movie for Xbox One. Even the Ocean for Xbox One. Stones of Revenant for Xbox One. Beyond Enemy Lines 2 for Xbox One. Norman's Great Illusion for Xbox One and Switch. Distropolis for PC, Pendulum for PC, Missing Time for PC and Mac, Mushroom Picker Simulator for PC, Flying Slime for PC, and Patch 1.02 for Horizon Zero Dawn PC is out now. This patch aims to address various crashes and graphical issues reported by the Horizon Zero Dawn PC community. And then new dates for you, Baldur's Gate 3 is entering early access on September 30th. Now it's time for reader mail. You can write in patreon.com slash kind of funny games where you can get your questions read on the show, just like the nanobiologist. Nanobiologist wrote in and said, uh, happy Widow Wednesday, Gary and Bless. There have been so, so many under the radar hits that just launched to huge success. Microsoft Flight Simulator being the newest one. Being that, being that the big Xbox game, or being, being that big Xbox game that's now up there with The Last of Us 2, Persona 5 Royal, and Half-Life Alex. But why do you think that this huge launch is going unnoticed by the wide gaming population? Even if this game is a technological marvel that truly pushes the boundaries, do flight simulators just get a pass from nearly everyone? On another note, what do you hope to see for the eventual console release of this game that may push this more, more into either of your interests or make this game more widely regarded as one of the greats of 2020? Thanks, the nanobiologist. Gary, have you been keeping up with the uh, Microsoft Flight Simulator? Yes, I've had it pre-ordered for a while. It's uh, well, it's on Game Pass, so you know, you, so you just click yes, I want it. Um, and I've had it for a while, and it dropped, uh, I believe, yesterday uh, or Monday. 
uh, yesterday, I think. I can't remember. It was one of those. I guess who knows what the day, the days of the week. Who cares? Um, yeah. But it's out now. And I don't think it has gone entirely unnoticed. I, I've seen a lot of buzz about it. Snowbike Mike was just streaming it uh, last night. A lot of very uh, popular, a lot of the bigger Twitch streamers have been streaming it. It's a really, really, like, just jaw-droppingly amazing uh, thing that they've achieved with Micro Microsoft Flight Simulator, the new one. You know, fly anywhere in the world, and they mapped the entire planet. Uh, you know, all the major cities, you know, rendered in, in you know, incredible fidelity. I think it's a really remarkable thing. I'm looking forward to playing it. I'm considering streaming it. I don't think it has gone unnoticed. You know, I used to edit PC yeah. Gamer back in the day, and Microsoft Flight Simulator is one of the all-time, you know, great, venerable uh, series in gaming. It's like a cornerstone of, of gaming culture. Maybe not so well known in the, in the uh, you know, the console world because it's always been a, you know, essentially a PC um, uh, franchise. Uh, but it's now coming to, I think it'll make a bigger splash when it comes to Xbox and becomes more accessible uh, to people who can just pick up and play, you know, with a controller. Um, I think I think Flight Simulator is going to be a going to be a big deal going forward. I think it has made a splash um, and I can't wait to play it. Yeah, I'm of the same mind that I think Microsoft Flight Simulator, for what I've seen on social media, people are really digging it, or at least the people that are playing it. To Nanobiologist's part of the of their question where they, where he says, do flight simulators just get a pass from nearly everyone? Like, yeah, like that's, I mean, yeah, like flight simulators aren't going to be for everyone. I don't think there's, I don't think, I mean, I, I think there are plenty of games out there that aren't going to be for everyone. Um, that's just, that's, that's just how things are, right? The fact that I like, for me personally, right, I saw that flight simulator got a 10 out of 10 from IGN. I saw that it was killing it in terms of Metacritic reviews and is, is one of the highest rated games of the year. You know, I saw that and I was like, wow, that's awesome. That's really exciting. Like, good for them. I'm probably not going to play the game. Because, like, I just don't, I, that's just not where I find my enjoyment, right? Simulating flight. Like, that doesn't, that doesn't really appeal to my interest. Uh, that said, like, who knows? I might try it I was gonna, out. I, I, was gonna 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 say gonna I, I was going to say, do you, think, do you think there's a chance that were you to try it, you might be surprised by it and actually get into it? Maybe. Like, I, and, and that's my thing. I do have, my curiosity has been piqued. I will say that. <laughs> like, I, I, I don't have any plans of jumping deep into Microsoft Flight Simulator, but. If I get a moment, like especially with it being on Game Pass, I'm down to try it out and see what it's about and and tinker around a bit. Um, but it's just not it's just not something that really like gets me going, right? It's not like The Last of Us where I'm like, oh yeah, I love zombies, I love Naughty Dog as a studio, you know, I love The Last of Us One, The Last of Us Two is gonna be for me, or Ghost of Tsushima, where I'm like, I like open world video games, that game's gonna be for me, or even Doom or Ori, like there, and I'm I'm naming very video gamey games that are gonna be for. A wider range of people than Microsoft Flight Simulator is. I just think the nature of the the type of game Microsoft Flight Simulator is means that, like that 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 is for a more hardcore audience, especially like folks who like flight simulators. Like yeah, and if you want to be really hardcore and hook up the flight stick and the throttle and the pedals, you can. It, it will support that. Flight Sim is always catered to like the high end, you know, simulator, uh, you know, freaks. Um, but it's all, but you know, there's also a version that where you know you can dial it down and make it very accessible. I think um, one point I would like to raise about Microsoft Flight Simulator and why I think it could be, it could be like, uh, it could be a really big deal, is it might be another one of these cases of like the right game at the right time. Animal Crossing was the right game at the right time, right? In these pandemic times, everybody wanted an escape, a distraction. They wanted to go to a tranquil bucolic place you know where nothing bad can ever really happen to you and you can hang out with your adorable neighbors animal crossing like really struck a nerve because um it it was what we all needed uh during these mm -hmm. sucky times i think fall guys would have been a hit whenever it was released but i think particularly now when again everyone's so fucking miserable and the world is on fire fall guys is a game that is just fun for fun's sake and i go and i watch these streams and i watch people people playing fall guys and i'm like when was the last time I saw this many people having this much fun, just kind of laughing their heads off or like rage quitting? Like whether it makes you angry or happy or sad or whatever, like Fall Guys just really makes you feel a lot of stuff. And it's like mostly just fun and it's silly and it's joyful. And again, that's what we need right, right now. And I wonder if Flight Simulator could in a weird way be that as well, because it's a, you know, there's no combat, there's no, there's challenge, but it's like, you know, you can just, Get, you can do something you can't do in the world right now, which is fucking get on a plane and fly somewhere else, right? As, as Americans, we can't do that. We're fucking trapped here because we're a plague nation. Um, but, you know, in the virtual world, in a very realistically simulated high-fidelity virtual world, you can actually get on a plane right now and fly anywhere in the world uh, and and see the world in a way that we we Americans in the real world cannot, cannot do right now. And you can do it at your own pace, 
Uh, no one's going to shoot you out of the sky. Zombies aren't going to attack you. You're not going to get hijacked. You can just chill out and play. And I think for that reason, um, it might also uh, strike the right chord at the right time. Now it's time to squad up. Jeff Collins writes in with a squad up on PS4 and says, I'm looking for some best friends to play the new season of Apex Legends. I want to get back into Apex with a full squad since my local friends have crazy schedules uh, to where it makes it hard to play with them. So I look to the kind of funny best friends to, uh, for help and maybe to get that elusive W in Apex Legends. If you want to play with Jeff Collins on PS4, you can add them with the username Masaru702. That is M-A-S-A-R-U 702 on PSN. Now it's time for kindoffunny.com slash you're wrong, where you write in and let us know what we got wrong as we got it wrong. Uh, Wit wrote in and mentioned that Manifold Garden and Spirit Fair came out on PS4. And that's, of course, that's more of a you're wrong for yesterday um, because those games weren't listed on the out today list for PS4. So there you go. And I've been playing Manifold Garden on PS4, let me tell you. And that is an awesome game. Uh, Nana Ball just says Infallible, which I believe is the Fall Guys trophy where you have to get five wins in a row, uh, is sitting at 0.1% completed on PSN um, and 2.01% on PSN profiles. And I think PSN profiles is tracking people who specifically have PSN profiles accounts. And so, Honestly, even 0.1% is impressive. Five in a row when you consider yeah. how much luck plays a part in that game. Again, like you said, with such a big player base, so many people are playing it right now. Statistically... Yeah, so, yeah it's, 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 if you flip a coin a million times, sometimes it's going to come up 50 times heads in a row. Just statistically, eventually it's going to happen. It's super duper unlikely, but it is happening. And it's kind of, it's kind of miraculous. I love it. Dude, I mean, I almost watched it happen uh, a couple of days ago with, Yous with Yousef. And legit, I, couldn't, I could not believe it. Um, and so shout out to those people who are able to make it that far. Uh, Nano also you, by, by the way, blessing. Like, are you are you playing mm -hmm. Fall Guys? Are you, what's your Fall Guys experience been like? Are you enjoying the game? Do oh, I'm, I'm loving it. I'm. I mean, I've I've gotten one crown. I'm terrible okay. at it. Is the thing, and I don't understand how I'm so terrible at this game. Like I am, <laughs> I am pretty, pretty similar to Tim the Tap Man, where I've gotten close quite a Except few times. Except you have a crown. I, 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 I for some reason I cannot secure the dub. I do have a crown though. Like I do, and I got the crown <laughs> early, which I'm very happy about. But since then, I've not been able to get another one. And I've seen all my friends uh, win right in front of me, and so. Yeah, come on, get to, get to these uh, twenty wins, bless. Come on. I know Nano says, uh, one item not noted during the Xbox dashboard thing. Uh, screenshots and videos are automatically sent to your phone so you can upload them to social media. That oh, way, like that. instead of using the controller to type. That was kind of already a feature. Like, I remember kind of using that on Xbox currently. But, like, you kind of had to do... You kind of had to... Um, if you have the Xbox app on your phone, you can basically go to your Xbox if you're taking a screenshot or a video and then, like, upload it to the cloud, essentially. And then you can download it from Xbox <clears throat> on your phone and then tweet it that way. <clears throat> so it's not as much of a new thing. Uh, Nano says, bless, you said the dashboard is 50% faster, but Xbox is counting 30% faster. They had a couple of percentages in there. I probably got them mixed up. But yeah, 30% faster for the dashboard. Uh, and really see. quick, guess, uh, while you're looking for any more uh, live show people, screencast will be a little late because I'm also running the Games Daily Post Show today. There you go. And then uh, Nano says, not sure what you mean by games being... And now, Nano, now, now we're getting into editorialization territory, but I'm going to read it just so I can roast you. Uh, not sure what you mean by games now being front and center. When you boot up the Xbox and go to the dashboard, games are front and center with, with the past four games you played and the games the game you have in the disk drive. I know this nanobiologist, but you still have to go to my games and apps, which is like a smaller thing that's up in the corner if you want to actually check out your library of games. I like the way that PlayStation and Switch have it to where front and center, boom, all your games. Scroll to the right, I can see right. all my games. Like, I feel like that's way more easy and intuitive for a game platform, but that is my opinion. Uh, and then I asked for clarification on Persona 3 Portable. Matt DeWab says uh, Persona 3 Portable has more of a light novel presentation, but it has an alternate, alternate story route with the female main character, and it includes controllable party members. So there you go. Port Persona 3 to some modern platform. It doesn't even have to be the Switch. I would love it to be the Switch, but mainly any modern platform I will take. Please, Atlas. So I'm like delaying time because I'm trying to figure out how to delete the rest of your wrong. All right. So tomorrow's hosts for the show are 
me and Greg. Uh, and for Friday, it's Greg and me. So look forward to the rest of the week. And of course, this has been Kind of Funny Games Daily each and every week at 10 a.m. live right here on twitch.tv slash Kind of Funny Games. We run you through the nerdy news you need to know about. We have a Patreon post show for those that are subbed at the silver level of patreon.com slash Kind of Funny Games. So stick around for that. Otherwise, until next time, game daily.